Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. This channel provides easy to understand explanations of car mechanisms. The topic of this video is electronic engine control systems. As you may know, modern gasoline engines are mostly electronically controlled. This video will explain the fundamentals of the electronically controlled fuel injection system and ignition system. In electronically controlled gasoline engines, the ECU, electronic control unit, calculates the optimal fuel injection quantity and ignition timing, based on information from various sensors. The sensors and actuators shown in this diagram are just a few, as in actual engines, a more extensive array of sensors contribute information for advanced control. The most basic fuel injection quantity is determined based on the intake air volume and engine rotation speed. The air intake volume is measured by the mass flow meter. Until the 1980s, flap type mass flow meters were commonly used. The airflow pushes the flap and alters its angle. The ECU monitors electrical resistance of the potentiometer and determines air volume. The flap creates a significant intake resistance. From the mid-1980s onwards, hot wire types and Carmen Vortex types started to be used. The hot wire type uses a platinum wire that is heated by passing an electric current through it, which is placed in the airflow path. The air intake volume is determined by measuring the electric current flowing through the wire. As the air intake volume increases, heat is drawn away from the wire, causing its temperature to decrease, resulting in a lower electrical resistance and a higher electric current flowing through the wire. Conversely, when the air intake volume decreases, the wire's temperature increases, leading to a higher electrical resistance and a lower electric current flowing through the wire. The Carmen Vortex type creates vortices via a pillar in the air passage, and determines the air intake volume by measuring the number of vortices. As the air intake volume increases, the number of vortices also increases, and as the air intake volume decreases, the number of vortices decreases as well. The ECU counts the number of vortices by using pressure pulses. The engine speed is measured by rotation sensors installed onto the crankshaft and camshaft. The three types of sensors commonly are used, the magnetic pickup type, the Hall effect type, and the MR, magnetic resistance element type. The magnetic pickup type detects changes in magnetic flux caused by the movement of teeth on a signal plate using a coil, and transmits the signal to the ECU as a rotation signal. A Hall element sensor utilizes the Hall effect. It generates a voltage when an electric current is passing through the element and it is subjected to a magnetic field. Hall element sensors became commonly used as rotation sensors from the late 1980s to the early 1990s. The MR, magnetic resistance element, is a sensor that, like the Hall effect sensor, detects changes in magnetic flux. However, it is capable of more accurate detection compared to the Hall effect sensor. The crankshaft and camshaft have different shape of signal plates, so the waveforms outputted by the rotation sensors are also different. The ECU not only monitors the engine rotation speed but also accurately determines the position, direction, and speed of pistons in each cylinder, based on the differences in waveforms from the crankshaft and camshaft rotation sensors. The ECU has an injection quantity map that corresponds to the air intake volume and engine speed, and it calculates the basic injection quantity based on this map. Furthermore, various correction maps such as cold start correction, warm-up correction, acceleration correction, power correction, and exhaust gas feedback control are used to determine the final injection quantity. For this purpose, the ECU monitors the engine condition by utilizing various sensors. Let's take a look at some of them. The ECU constantly monitors the driver's accelerator pedal usage, calculates the required engine torque, and sends a drive signal to the electric motor to open the throttle valve. 
the ECU monitors the accelerator pedal opening angle and opening velocity through the accelerator pedal sensor. It utilizes two sensors with different resistance values. Verifying the consistency of signals from two sensors with different characteristics improves reliability. The ECU calculates the optimal throttle valve opening based on the signal from the accelerator pedal sensor and activates the throttle motor. The throttle valve sensor transmits the signal of the actual throttle valve opening angle to the ECU. Similar to the accelerator pedal sensor, it enhances reliability by utilizing two sensors. Engine coolant temperature and intake air temperature are also crucial factors in determining the fuel injection quantity. These temperature sensors utilize a type of semiconductor known as a thermistor. A thermistor has the task of decreasing electrical resistance as the temperature rises. The ECU measures engine coolant temperature and intake air temperature based on the voltage applied to the sensor. The O2 sensor is used to maximize the effectiveness of the three-way catalytic converter in purifying exhaust gases. A three-way catalytic converter operates most efficiently when the air-to-fuel mass ratio is 14.7 to 1. The O2 sensor provides feedback to the ECU regarding the remaining oxygen content in the exhaust gas, and the ECU adjusts the fuel injection quantity accordingly. When the final injection quantity is determined, the ECU sends a driving signal to the fuel injector. When electricity is supplied to the coil of the fuel injector, the needle valve is lifted to inject gasoline. When the current is cut off, the return spring pushes down the needle valve, closing the injection port. A longer energization time results in a greater injection quantity, while a shorter energization time leads to a smaller injection quantity. Similar to the fuel injection system, the ignition system, the ECU calculates the optimal ignition timing using signals from various sensors and generates sparks at the spark plug. First, let's take a look at the principle of generating sparks in a spark plug. The ignition system consists of a spark plug, ignition coil, battery, and switch. Inside the ignition coil, there are two coils, the primary coil and the secondary coil. Currently, the switch is turned on, and electricity flows from the battery through the primary coil. The moment the switch is turned off, a large amount of electricity is generated in the primary coil. This effect is called self-induction. The large amount of electricity in the primary coil induces an even larger amount of electricity in the secondary coil. This effect is called mutual induction. The high voltage electricity generated by mutual induction generates sparks in the spark plug. When the switch is turned on, electricity flows from the battery back through the primary coil. In actual ignition systems, the interruption of electrical current flowing through the primary coil is controlled by the semiconductor components within the control unit. Generally, earlier ignition timing makes for better engine efficiency. However, ignition timing being too early causes knocking. Knocking is a kind of abnormal combustion that can reduce output, worsen fuel efficiency, and in the worst cases, cause mechanical damage to the engine. Therefore, the ECU constantly performs gradual advancement of the ignition timing, and when it detects knocking, it retards the ignition timing. Let's take a closer look at the specific control sequence. Under normal conditions, the ECU gradually advances the ignition timing. When knocking occurs, it is detected by the knock sensor. The knock sensor utilizes a type of semiconductor known as a piezoelectric element. The piezoelectric element generates electricity when pressure is applied. Within the knock sensor, when it receives vibrations at specific frequencies, it outputs a signal to the ECU. 
Since knocking occurs during the combustion process, the ECU identifies the cylinder where knocking is occurring by determining the cylinders in the combustion cycle through the crankshaft angle sensor and camshaft angle sensor. The ECU retards the ignition timing only for the cylinder, where knocking is occurring. Once the knocking subsides, the ECU gradually advances the ignition timing again. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.